Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, and today on HGMM, I'm going to help you find the perfect gift for any artist or crafter on your Christmas list. Now, I don't know of a crafter or artist that would turn down a gift card to their favorite art supply store, but there's something so special on opening up a gift that was picked just for you. The first thing I think we'll talk about is watercolors and watercolor products because depending on what kind of discipline your favorite artist is doing, they're going to want different supplies. Now, if someone is just getting into watercolors, it's really fun to shop for them. What I'd recommend is a small tin of high quality watercolors. Now, these are the Lucas colors. They're not very expensive. And I like these little tins because you have a lot of mixing area. You get a place for a little brush in the center. You can paint with it at home. You've got enough colors that you can learn how to mix, but not too many that you're overwhelmed, and you can also take it on the go with you. If you pair that with a watercolor pad and maybe a couple brushes, I would go with like a synthetic brush that's not too, um, that's not too thirsty. Like uh, there's a line that I like called uh, Royal and Langnickel Majestic or Aqualon, and the big box stores sell these uh, sets of brushes pretty inexpensively. That is a wonderful get started kit. It's also a great kit for um, if you have children that are getting into watercolors because they're not going to be sacrificing quality um, and they'll have plenty of options to get started with just with these few items. Now, somebody that's been painting a long time is already going to have this stuff. They're going to have a lot of things, and you want to make sure that you're buying them a gift that will be appreciated and um, that will get used. So there's a couple different ways that you can go about buying a gift for an experienced watercolorist. So one is to get something consumable that you know they're going to use. Arches paper is fairly universally most watercolorists favorite. I mean, not everybody, but most watercolorists use Arches paper, A-R-C-H-E-S. It's actually pronounced Arch, but in America we call it Arches. And um, if you want to really get an exquisite gift, buy 300 pound Arches paper. If, if your artist is like me, then they're too cheap to spend the money on the 300 pound paper. They'll use a 140 pound paper, but it's really luxurious and nice to paint on 300 pound watercolor paper, 100% cotton watercolor paper, and that would be a fantastic gift because it will get used. The next thing that I want to recommend are some brushes. Nowadays, synthetic brushes have gotten so good. There's so many brushes out there that mimic animal hair, and they are so much better for the environment and so much better for your pocketbook. And there's a couple that I really would like to recommend recommend. Uh, one is the Mimic Squirrel. These are all faux fur, and uh, these are made by Creative Mark. I really love this number 30 round. Uh, there's a set that actually has all of these brushes in it if you are, you know, depending on your budget, how much you want to spend. And I think this set, this set is under $100, um, but it is, you know, it is a pretty well-rounded set. I don't actually recommend these for beginners just because they hold so much water that I think it's a little bit daunting uh, when a beginner starts off with a brush like this just because it's it's a little harder to control, but an experienced watercolorist will get a lot of use out of these. Uh, if you don't have a store that stocks Creative Mark, there are Princeton Neptune brushes. Those are excellent, and um, they're, they're a little more expensive than the Mimics are online, but they're a really good brush. I actually like these a little better, but um, if you're in store and you're looking, you could probably find Princeton Neptune. And uh, an affordable option that's very similar are the Royal and Langnickel Zen, and most big box craft stores will have these, and these are fantastic. I, I, you're not going to go wrong with any of those. And if you have a, an experienced watercolorist that maybe hasn't tried any specialty brushes, you might try a dagger brush. It's just kind of a fun, um, a fun shape to use. And uh, if they don't paint with big brushes very much, a large oval wash or a really big round brush is fun because you can really wet a whole sheet of paper quickly and it's just kind of fun to play with a big brush, I think. Now, if you want more of a, I don't want to say frivolous because I think art's very important, but something that's a little bit more playful, you might want to try a watercolor crayon. A lot of different companies make watercolor sticks and watercolor crayons. Um, for instance, these are the American Journeys set. They come um, in sets of different amounts. I've got the set of 24 here, but um, there's uh, there's some sticks in there. There's place to cut off a little piece of stick and make it into a palette. Uh, they're a lot of fun. You can sketch with them. You can paint with them. They're just they're just kind of fun. And I think most artists like to try something different once in a while, just kind of break them out of a creative rut. So watercolor crayons. Another thing that I didn't think I was going to like, and I never would have spent money on for myself, but 
now that I have it, I use it all the time and I love it. And that is a light box. And these have gotten quite reasonable on Amazon. This one's pretty big. You wouldn't necessarily need one this big, I don't think, but uh, this one I think was around $100. And these are fantastic because I'm somebody who likes to draw. So I didn't think I'd really enjoy a light box very much, but I found that I could sketch out my drawing, make all my mistakes on scratch paper. And then I could put the, that drawing on the light box, put my heavyweight watercolor paper on top and still be able to see through it so I could draw right on the watercolor paper without the mistake line. So um, it was quicker than getting out transfer paper and, I, and it was with my pencils that I actually used. So even if I wanted to trace over it with watercolor pencil and not have pencil lines, it was just fantastic. Cause sometimes the transfer paper will leave a waxy residue. So I really like that. If you have a larger budget for the watercolorist in your life, that's a wonderful option for a gift. For acrylic painters, if you want to go for some practical gifts that you know will get used, try getting them some stretched canvases. If you stick with a brand like Frederick's or the Better Craft Store brands, um, those will be fine and really appreciated. Palette paper is a wonderful gift for an acrylic painter because it saves their cleanup time. And it's not a very fun thing to buy yourself, so it's great if you don't have to spend your money on that and you can go buy more of the paint you like. It's very difficult when um, you have artists that are accustomed to certain brands and prefer certain brands over another. You don't want to get them a paint that they're not going to like. Also, brushes are great for acrylic painters because they go through brushes a lot quicker than um, any other medium. So even if you bought the exact same brushes your acrylic painter already had, chances are they're going to need to replace them sooner or later, so they're going to be all set. Now, if you want a really fun, um, more frivolous item to get an acrylic painter, I would recommend trying some acrylic mediums. And you can go into any of the big, bo big box art store and you can find multi-packs like Liquitex and Golden will make these packs of six different mediums. And there's mediums to make your paint thick, medium to make your paint thin, mediums to make your paint stringy, mediums to make your paint crunchy, mediums to make your paint drizzly. There's mediums for anything. There's a medium for that. It's like there's an app for that. There's a medium for that. And they're just kind of fun and they break you out of a creative rut. So getting a pack of mediums will be a great gift for an acrylic painter. I do recommend that you find a coupon before you go into the art supply store because they can be a little pricey and that way it brings down the gift to a very reasonable amount. Another fun thing for an acrylic painter would be a gel press or a jelly plate or any of the um, permanent gelatin plates. They're not made out of gelatin, but they're um, there to replicate gelatin printmaking. And I'm going to show you one I have here. This is probably bigger than what you'd want to go with, but it was the handiest one that I had out. This is by the gel press company. And basically it's a big squishy pad that you roll paint, you roll your acrylic paint onto, and then you press paper down and you make prints. It's a lot of fun. And I actually recommend this for children and for paper crafters as well. Anybody that wants to have a really fun, um, just fun art play project. It's, and you want to make sure you include a rubber brayer if you go with this because you'll, you'll want it. It's really handy to have, but that's definitely kind of a whimsical gift that I think an acrylic painter would love because they can use it with their paints. They could press their canvas down onto the gel plate and get some really cool textures too. So I think that would be a hit at Christmas. Now, if you have a beginner acrylic painter, I recommend an all-in-one kit. I know Royal and Langnickel make some art instructor kits and they have like a little easel. They'll have a dozen paints, they'll have a dozen brushes, and they'll have a couple canvas panels or some canvas pads. That will get them through their first few paintings and then they can decide what colors they want, they really use and then they can go and buy individual tubes of the colors that they actually use. So it's a very um, nice way for somebody to get started. They'll have everything together and they can see if they really like the medium or not before they go and invest in more supplies for themselves. So an all-in-one kit for a beginner painter is always a good idea, even for a beginner oil painter or a beginner watercolorist. If your artist is into oil paints, they probably have um, their favorite brand of oils and their favorite colors. So it might be really tough to buy something like that for them. But I just found these uh, painting panels that I really like. They are the Sensio all media sized linen painting panel. You can get them in panels or stretch canvas, but I love that you have the actual color of the linen. They're primed with a clear primer and they're, cause it's linen, it's really silky smooth. So if, especially if your artist likes to do detail or portrait work or just like, I painted that on a Sensio panel. I just really love the texture of it and uh, it's, it's a dream to paint on. So I recommend these. I think they're fairly new too. So chances are they don't have them. Another fun thing would be to get an oil bar or a paint stick um, because it's oil paint in a stick form. Please excuse this packaging. This is like, I've had this for a long time, but um, they're basically like big oil pastels. You can sketch on with them and then you can even thin them down with your linseed oil or turpentine. It's a great media that they can use with what they already have. Both of these gifts are things they can use with the stuff they already have, which
which I think is really smart. There's also some brushes that I recently found that I liked. They're called Black Swan. They're by Creative Mark, and they are a faux red squirrel, and they are beautiful for blending um, smooth transitions if you like to work with um, thinner layers of oil paint. So those would be my picks for an oil painter. For the pastel artist in your life, I recommend having something that's kind of fun. These are pan pastels and you can get regular colors. There's like something like 80 regular colors in the line, but there's also pa uh, pearlescent and metallic colors. And chances are um, the average pastel artist wouldn't have the pearlescent or metallic ones. So that would be kind of a fun gift to give because it just lets them exper like experience pastels in a new way and it lets them just kind of play and get out of any creative rut they might be in. This is also a really fun gift for a paper crafter or a rubber stamper. Another pastel that I really love and it's very luxurious and a little pricey is the Schmincke pastels. They're extremely soft and they're great for adding final touches on pastels. So if you've got someone that's been doing pastels for a while but might be on a budget or never really splurged for the good stuff, this would be such a luxurious gift and they would really appreciate it. Now tools, if you're not sure what they have for pastels and you don't dare buy something afraid that it's not going to get used, try some of these tools. These are the pan pastel sponges and they have these little palette knives that the sponges go on. They're called soft tools, S-O-F-F-T. Um, I'll put a list of all of these things in the video description, but um, they are wonderful for spreading out the pastel if you don't want to get your fingers dirty and for using these pastel palettes, but you can actually use these for blending your regular pastel work too. They're just a lot of fun. And you can also look at pastel pastel storage cabinets if you think that's something that they might like. Now we all know some creative person in our life. They may not necessarily call themselves an artist or a crafter, but we all have friends that have creative um, tendencies. And one really fun thing to get somebody that's creative is a coloring book and either markers or crayons or color pencils, good, good quality ones. Um, and you can really find coloring books for any genre. This one's really pretty. It's all vintage images. And um, these are really fun to color and frame because they're all just really pretty vintage prints. And you can really find a coloring book on anything. My friend Audrey got me this Benedict Cumberbatch coloring book and uh, it's pretty awesome. <sighs> Sherlock. Another fun idea for adults is origami jewelry, uh, origami paper dolls. There's lots of different origami kits that are a lot of fun. My sister got me both of these and they are just really fun to sit down and make. You can do these at the coffee table. You don't have to have a craft room or an art studio. Very self-contained, just like the coloring books. For a paper crafter or scrapbooker or card maker, I would recommend getting some nice quality cardstock. When you're looking at stamps and pattern paper and like fabric for quilters, it's really tricky to pick out something that they're gonna really like because I think that images and patterns are really kind of personal preference, but high quality cardstock is always going to be a winner. If you wanna get something that's a little more fun, I would consider a scrapbooking or card making subscription box. I know that like Simon Says Stamp has a card kit. There are tons of companies out there that have scrapbooking subscription boxes. You can just get one or you can get a couple of months, but it's a really fun gift, especially when you think of them getting a new one in the month every, in the mail every month. It's also tough to pick yarn out for people. So if you have a knitter or a crocheter on your list, you may consider getting like a um, like stitch markers that are kind of funky, maybe handmade from a craft fair or something, or maybe some novelty looms like a sock loom or a blanket loom, or there's a product called a nook, which is like a crochet hook and knitting needle combination. So you kind of like crochet and knit at the same time. It's kind of interesting and fun and they probably don't already have it, but they probably would really enjoy playing with it. Also, if you're buying for a knitter or a quilter, I recommend getting a subscription to their favorite magazine or a magazine that deals with their favorite hobby. And if they already have a subscription, you can just renew what they already have. But that again gives you a gift in the mail every month and it's so special. Last but not least, let's talk about their creative kids on your list. One of my favorite gifts for crafty kids is Sculpey 3 Clay. I really like this because you have an assortment of 30 different colors. This is perfect for making beads or little figurines. Kids love clay and this stuff is soft enough that they can manipulate it with their hands. Unlike some of the more expensive artisanal clay, artisanal clays, uh, fancy, they're, t they're tough to manipulate. These you can totally sculpt with your hands and they're perfect for kids. I also really like the Portfolio Pastels. 
they're water soluble cray paws type material and they're really easy to blend and spread big sketchbooks are wonderful for kids and also any book by klutz is wonderful because they're all broken down into really great projects and usually everything is included that you need in one of those books so those are great ideas for kids and perler beads are fun too there's so many things just look down the kids aisle of the craft store and i'm sure you'll find something fantastic i hope you enjoyed this rundown of gifts for the artist or crafter in your life remember your gift comes from the heart so i'm sure they'll love whatever you pick out and if all else fails you can always grab a gift card thank you so much for watching home and garden for me immortals and please check out my channel the frugal crafter for daily craft and painting tutorials thanks for watching and until next time happy crafting bye now